because the management and transparency is what's very important. So once you submit a referral, you're going to have your own home advantage account and it's going to tell you where everything sits. So if you have 10 referrals that you've sent into the network, it's going to give you all 10 referrals. It's going to tell you every milestone that that client is sitting in, whether they're touring homes, whether they're in escrow. And you now can manage through the Home Advantage application as far as what your pipeline looks like for the referrals that you've sent. And so it's pretty sophisticated uh, and it's, it's all click of a button, guys. How many of you listening to this podcast would be considered a toe dipper? Somebody who is actually in real estate, I'd call it passively, maybe part-time. Your real estate strategy is maybe go to church, maybe go to the local coffee house, maybe go to your full-time job and just constantly announce to people what you do for a living. Well, let me tell you. The reason why you're a toe dipper, the reason why you're part-time, maybe the reason why you can't even get to full-time is because that is your strategy and your strategy sucks. And you need to be better at giving constantly before you ask, because most of you ask right out of the gate. And our guest today has an amazing background in tech. He has a current platform that we will talk about called Audience today, uh, but his background in tech is what led him to where he is today, which helps sales professionals, not just real estate, stand above and create more conversations and be remembered and not have to always be asking for the business. And so I'm excited for this conversation. As I always say, uh, or oftentimes say in these, in these uh, intros, selfishly, I'm excited to interview our guest today. Welcome to the show, Jesse Stein. Thank you, Jeff. Great to be here. Well, it's glad to have you, man. You're uh, you're based out of Miami, as you mentioned, as we were talking off air. Uh, I kind of gave a little little just tease about who you are, what you do, but why don't you give us a deeper background about who you are, what kind of led you to where you are today, and then let's go deep on how I just ripped a lot of real estate agents to threads in that uh, in that intro. Awesome. So yeah, I got started in tech about 25 years ago, right around the time Google launched and started my first online retailer in 1999. And then I uh, grew a company, an interactive agency in New York City to a big $30 million agency, got it acquired in 2005. And in 2005, started getting super interested in domaining. This is kind of like the landholders of the internet. And so I bought hobbies.com and biking.com, boating.com, yachting.com, all these like category defining domain names. But the one that really took off was sportsmemorabilia.com. So bought that as a raw domain. And with a team of people, this is a common thread in my career, with a team of people much smarter than me, we grew it into the biggest autograph store on the internet, top 500 internet retailer, sold it to Fanatics in 2013. But what we realized, one of the pillars of our growth was handwritten notes, because we sent the handwritten notes to our clients and noticed that the clients that received handwritten notes spent more money with us left better reviews, were easier to deal with. There was just all kinds of benefits. But the problem was the uh, notes were being written by contractors, framers, employees, and the handwriting was often embarrassing. There was no way to scale it. There's no way to run campaigns. There's no way to inject personalized variables in the notes. And so I knew this was a big opportunity, but I didn't and I was kind of waiting for someone to do it. No one did it. So a couple of years ago, actually three and a half years ago, hired a team of software engineers and we created audience.co. Currently we have 350 handwriting robots that hold pins and write precisely like humans with the same pressure and slant and flow as a human. And we do the notes and then we have this incredible digital marketing follow-up system. But the genesis of that really was sports memorabilia.com. And Jeff, like you and I do not have the time for me to tell you about all the things that haven't worked out. I have a ton of those. I don't seem to get any wiser with age, but uh, that's kind of a, the short and sweet version of, of my career. I love it. You're a risk junkie. It sounds like you, you, you keep going back for more, which is uh, I think pretty common with successful people actually. 
I love it. Well, and the the one thing you didn't mention too, or I didn't mention, and and you didn't mention it just right there, other than the robot, is that you know it's 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 AI. This is this is another version of artificial intelligence. Uh, But before we get into there, because this is AI powered handwritten notes, which is pretty fascinating and probably going to become much more common. But but before we get to that, you know, so it, it was the sports memorabilia. You, you've mentioned to me off air that you've had multiple exits. What other type of companies uh, have you grown and, and, and sold? Yeah, so sportsmemorabilia.com. And then I was in a Sephora with my wife in 2003 in New York City. And I was bored out of my mind. <laughs> I was sitting there and my wife was shopping for skin creams and she ended up buying this skin cream that was like $50. And I'm a typical guy, didn't know that a skin cream could cost more than four bucks. And I, so I asked her, asked her, take me to this like tiny little area with these super overpriced skin creams. And of course it was the entire store. And so I kind of saw the light (laughs) and I went and I called a bunch of laboratories and we developed this high-end skin cream line. I even named it Dermaprel, but that didn't sound good enough. So I added an SP. The SP stands for nothing whatsoever. It's just Dermaprel SP. And then went on to sell $48 million of it online in 18 months. So in the prior several years, I really learned how to buy media on the internet, how to SEO websites, how to do affiliate marketing, how to build websites and so forth. So I was really lucky that I kind of got my reps in early on. And so that culminated in being able to really like blow out this wrinkle cream uh, and skincare offer, ended up exiting that business in 2009. The third exit was actually earlier on, started a business in 2000, interactive agency in New York City, and grew that into a $28 million interactive agency and sold it uh, in 2005. And then in 2009, started uh, a diet nutrition website called dietspotlight.com, which still today is one of the most highly trafficked uh, nutrition websites. It's very quiet. It's one of those websites that appears in SEO when you search for strange long tail permutations of like, you know, protein shakes and, 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 and so forth, but launched that in 2009 and it's gotten 149 million unique visitors since 2009. And it's one of the biggest affiliates to Noom. So there's a lot of those type of websites. And like I said, I've, I've failed a lot too. And so there's a lot of stuff that I've launched that's either blown up on the launch pad or like blown up as it's entering, you know, or exiting or orbit. And, uh, and so, you know, but I consider those all, all great learning experiences too. I love it. Let, let me ask you just, just kind of curiosity. What did you do prior to the first company that you built? Were you in like corporate America or what, what did you do? Yeah. So I spent six years living and working in Japan, actually. So uh, I did my junior year in Japan and then I went right back. And my first job out of undergrad was door-to-door sales, knocking on doors in Tokyo with a suit on, with a corporate uh, pin in my lapel, selling um, very low-end kind of um, temp services. Uh, So like if you need a filing clerk, if you need a receptionist for your small business, that's what I was doing. And then I was a journalist in Japan for four years and then I think I fooled the admissions committee, but I got somehow got myself into Wharton. And so I did my MBA at Wharton um, and then graduated there. And then just right place, right time, really it just so happened that when I graduated in the late 90s was kind of the beginning of the commercial internet. And so I was there and got really lucky that just got started right around the time uh, Google launched. Interesting. What, what, so did you speak Japanese or these just yeah. all going really? Yeah. Well, I mean, which is not a, a badge of honor. It's just, I had to make a living and I went to Japanese college for a year and had a Japanese roommate. And I was one of eight foreigners in a dorm of 400 Japanese. So I kind of had to learn. I had a Japanese girlfriend. I had to learn a language and ended up working in the language for five years after that. Uh, what led you over there? It's totally random. I read a book in high school called Spring Snow by Yukio Mishima and uh, and the colors, you know, these weird little things that end up, uh, you know, changing the vector of your life. Like this is such a little thing. I just read a book in in my junior year um, English class in high school, Spring Snow. And I was just fascinated by the colors and the 
the writing and everything else. And one thing led to another, took Japanese in college. And then I did my junior year abroad and yeah. Interesting, man. That's, that's crazy. That, that, that's a, that's a fun story in and of itself. And I can't imagine learning Japanese is an easy language to learn. Uh, maybe you can correct me, but you know, uh, in my early twenties, it, it didn't feel easy, but I just think now it'd be impossible for me. I mean, yeah. for some reason, things in your early twenties is just like, you know, learning, learning the lyrics to a song you love or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's what I always tell people when I, when we're talking about shooting video and doing social, I'm like, it's a good thing we learn to walk and talk when we're infants, because otherwise we'd be an entire society that doesn't walk or talk if we had to learn to do it when we're in our thirties, uh, because we just don't, we just, we just too stubborn. You know, we just don't pick up new things very easily. All right. I got to go back to the, I got to go back to the skincare because I can totally relate. Um, I've been in like an Ulta store many times and just bitching at my wife about the cost that she's paying for this stuff. And, you know, I, I don't know about your wife, but my wife's response is always, honey, don't you want me to be beautiful? Don't you always want me to look young? Don't you want my skin to look? And it's like, what am I supposed to say to that? Um, and, and, and so I can relate. Uh, so when you created this product, did you, did you create it at a lower price point? Like, did you, so you did your homework and realized, all right, they're gouging. This costs 50 cents to create. There's no reason to charge 50. But tell me, tell me a little of the psychology behind that. Yeah. So what I discovered in calling these laboratories and formulating these skin creams is it is impossible to spend more than $3 and 50 cents, including the packaging on, on these products. And you can kind of, it's all in the eye of the beholder uh, in terms of what you can charge. And so we went high end because you can formulate a product and do the packaging for a dollar. But we went to the $3.50 one where we did the special citrus scent. And we had two active ingredients, argotensil, which had a short term effect of tightening the skin and then Matrixyl 3000, which actually stimulated the production of collagen and it kind of got rid of the, um, you know, appearance of fine lines and wrinkles longer term. So it was an act, it was latest science and um, the packaging was beautiful. And we ended up retailing it for $89.95 and sold direct to consumer and it was on continuity. So our lifetime value was upwards of 140, 150 bucks. People kept it on average about 1.8 months. And so, and we pushed it out via affiliate channels um, and pay, would pay affiliates 40, $45. So you just kind of do the math. Your cost of goods sold is so low on a product like that. And then lifetime value 140, you figure, you know, um, cost of goods sold five, $6 plus your affiliate rip. Uh, other than a little bit of overhead, most everything just dropped to the bottom line. So that was an extraordinary business, scaled to $48 million in revenue. And then this guy who was doing a roll-up uh, of businesses like ours ended up um, acquiring us. Uh, he he came in his private jet on a Monday and then had acquired us by Thursday. And so <laughs> it was pretty pretty fortunate uh, ride. Uh, you you know what? You're not going to sell me on your failures after that story, man. <laughs> That's crazy. And I think it's even funnier, the whole SP thing. Like, what was what was the psychology behind that? I mean, you have this name of a product which didn't sound sexy. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it, and and I'm not a skincare guy. Uh, but why the like? What was the the subliminal message that you were dropping there? Stun production, I think, was oh. our thought. Yeah, our thought was okay. it feels like it might have some UV protection, like an SPF type. Oh, okay, okay, that's it. And then we and then we even um, named the company something that sounded scientific and it's a Rauscher Beck, B-E-K-K-E, -E, Rauscher Beck, kind of like a Bausch and Lomb type of. <laughs> <laughs> so we named that company Rauscher Beck and then it was Dermaprol SP and then a lot of luck as well. But we, yeah, we ended up scaling that company really quickly. That's insane. So I assume that you and your wife both have like really nice skin. And oh, yeah, I'm actually 72 years old. So. <laughs> Uh, that's hilarious, man. So did your wife actually, was she like appreciative that she'd like that? I'm sure at first it's like a lot of eye rolls and like get off my ass kind of thing. And then it was like, great idea, honey. Now I can buy, I can have this product. Uh, he's been a trooper, you know, her nightstand for the first three years of our marriage was a computer. Um, we moved to the village in New York city when we, when we got married in 98 and then we, um, or 99, I should say we met in 98 and married in 99 pretty quick. 
And uh, and we had nine computers in our bedroom, in our little tiny bedroom in New York City, because at the time I was optimizing sites for Alta Vista and Excite at Home and Yahoo and a bunch of sites because Google had really just launched and we had these wireless modems. And if you reset the wireless modem, it would submit the site under a different class IP address, basically elevating your site for really choice keywords like deck consolidation and many, many others very quickly back in the day. And so she's been a trooper throughout. And so she doesn't eye roll when I have a new idea, but she takes it in stride and realizes it's it's kind of like, um, and thank goodness the current one, uh, audience.co is just rocking and uh we can talk about talk about that later and i'd love to most of all we we're talking before the show i just want to add value to your to your listeners uh that's yeah. the most important thing by far for me so strategies and hacks and shortcuts for for driving more listings i love it and and part of the reason why i ask you all these questions first of all is because you know we don't have a shortage of real estate podcasts right and i know we're a pretty successful one in terms of downloads and all that kind of stuff but at the same token i i sometimes think there's a shortage of getting to know people and i think sometimes if you get to know people and you get to hear us there's not many people that have really cool stories like you do and so uh you know again I, I if if i lost a listener because i was asking some personal questions i'm sorry not really but i'm sorry and uh, cuz i thought it was cool i thought this was pretty fascinating but i think it gives context to and validity to that you clearly even though you you downplay it and you're clearly humble and you know i've failed a lot of course you have but uh, these success stories are are defining and and so i want to ask you as as you talk about all of these digital things and you talk about domains and and obviously you were at the forefront i mean clearly you had the foresight and as as the world continues to evolve and, you know, you and I, you touched on this, you know, uh, I don't know if you know the story behind why we created Drunk on Social, but it's the same concept, like something was missing and, and we realized that there's no aggregation of social news and strategies. There's one offs and niches, but there's nothing broad based. And so that's why we created it. Uh, and but what we're learning is, is that the, the quicker you are to adopt things like TikTok, you know, the more growth you're going to have, the more opportunities you're going to create. But so many of us are so slow to adopt and embrace. And now here we are at the dawn of AI and not, you know, historically speaking, the dawn of anything was truly the dawn. Now, here we are six months later, and it's like it's been here forever and it's like mainstream and there's still probably a lot of people that aren't on it, but I'd like to pick your brain on that because as a, as a real estate industry, and I, I applaud our industry all the time. We are one of the, if not the most innovative industry on the planet. We embrace things quicker. We're the ones marketing on social more than any other industry. I mean, because everybody's an entrepreneur, right? They have to think outside the box. So coming from your background, what are some of the things as we as you think about, you know, how you did this domain thing and you had the foresight to buy yacht.com and this sort of thing and, and sportsmanwheel.com? Where should I, as a sales professional, an entrepreneur, what are the things that I should have my eye on that maybe others don't that I could potentially create an advantage by getting ahead? Yeah, there's so there's so many, but I'd say if if you just had three or four arrows in your quiver right now, and what you're looking to do is get ahead and really build uh, a real competitive advantage, real barriers to entry, re a real enduring business. Like you talked about, you know, being a dabbler or being a toe dipper. Uh, if if you are a realtor and you're making this your career and you're going all in and you're burning the ships then this is what I'd have to say. Vertical video. So you alluded to TikTok. This is the first time people forget like the commercial internet is pretty young. So it's still, it's only 10,000 days old. And so like people forget that there's a lot of opportunity here. And we're in this big transition place right now with ChatGPT. So this is, and I'll link the vertical video piece to ChatGPT, but this is why vertical video is so interesting. It's kind of like planetary alignment right now. This is the first time in since the advent of social media that one video format, vertical, is native to all the major platforms. So it's native to TikTok, it's native to Instagram, uh, Facebook, also landscape, but 
vertical. You got it. Yeah. yeah. And YouTube and Twitter as well. Um, LinkedIn will talk about LinkedIn's more of the algorithmically the master of the written word. So it it loves 800 to 1000 word articles for a whole host of reasons. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with posting vertical video there with four or five hashtags maximum on LinkedIn. But vertical videos where it's at and what you want to do, there's a there's a number of hacks here, but I really want to distill it down. It's 30 second to one minute videos. Uh, it's very rare these days that people, unless you are doing a podcast like this one and you're deep diving, but even this podcast, right, needs to be picked apart so you eat all the meat off the marketing bones. And it's not just these YouTube shorts, right, with the emojis and the sound effects and all this sort of thing. It's more just like thinking about ideas in 30 minute to, to one minute segments. And so like one, one gets very overwhelmed. I certainly do. When I think about, oh my, you know, how do I even, I'm a realtor. How do I even get started with vertical video? So my answer is really straightforward, or I should say my approach. Never am I ever giving advice. I'm just saying, hey, <laughs> this is what I've done over the last 25 years. And this is what's worked for me. And these are the things that haven't worked for me. And you can go for it uh, if you want. You can not go, go for it if you want. But what I do is I open up the voice memo app on my phone and I just talk about what I know. Like the most important thing is to talk about what you know, because no one can take that away from you. Instead of talking on social media about this is the truth. No, this is my truth. Like if I said, like Alex Hermosi talks about this, Gary Vee talks about this a lot. It's like, I had oatmeal for breakfast this morning, which is true. No one can take that away from me, right? But if the moment I say you should have oatmeal for breakfast, everyone tunes out because you're being cringy, you're being preachy. And there's a dime a dozen, there's a million people like that on social media. In fact, that's the norm. What's rare are people who just say, you know what? This is, I'm a nutrition coach. I had oatmeal for breakfast and I added, I'm making this up, right? But I added some chia seeds and I added some flaxseed and I added some almond milk. And this is, this is what I do. And so what I do is I open up the voice memo app and I talk about what I know with respect to a given project. So if, if it's a realtor, it might be a pre-construction construction project, let's say in your city. And you've done a little bit of research and you know the developer and you know the area and you know the best restaurants and whatever, just stream of consciousness, talk about what you know. And then what I do is I have that transcribed on uh, a site called Temi, T-E-M-I.com, which has been a secret weapon of mine I do share it. So it's not uh, not a secret. I love sharing the best of what I know with people. T spell that. Spell that. T like Tom, mm -hmm. E M I dot com, Timmy dot com. And it's AI based transcription. And it's with 99% accuracy. It's extremely fast and extremely accurate. So you could do a minute long voice or rather an hour long voice memo. And a minute later, you will get the transcription back from Timmy. Then, what you do, let's connect this to, to GPT-4, to chat GPT. So let me let me ask you a quick question. Yeah, yeah go for it's it. It's AI-based voice transcription? Or video transcription, right, exactly. Okay, so either so one. You, but you but can, not, it's not like taking, you're not taking a blog, it's taking something that you articulated from. Uh, you got got it. So you could take a, a link to a YouTube video, you could create a video. But what I like to do is I like to create voice memos about what I know. I do not editorialize. I don't ever preach. I just say, hey, this is what I know about this pre-construction development, for example. Have it transcribed, then take that transcription, paste it into chat GPT-4. So you can go to OpenAI, sign up, it's about 20 bucks a month, and it'll give you a little toggle switch, GPT-3.5 or GPT-4. GPT-4 is a vastly superior to 3.5. So paste your transcription, into GPT-4 and you can ask it to create video scripts based on what you just talked about. And, and you say, I would like video scripts that are between 30 seconds and a minute. And you can see where I'm going here. Mm -hmm. You can ask it to create Instagram captions. You can ask, to, ask it to create a LinkedIn article that's 800 words based on what you just said. It is phenomenal. To me, that's the best and highest use 
of GPT-4. You don't, I mean, there's, there's multiple, multiple other uses, but I'm just like, what is closest at hand for a real estate agent? Because remember, the objective is to build trust, to yeah. build expertise, authority, and trust among the households in your farm and also among your sphere. And the easiest way to do that, or I should say, the proper way to do that and build an enduring business, in my opinion, is to give, 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 give. And then you'll eventually get, right? You'll yeah. be just the clear, obvious choice whenever someone in your farm or among your sphere wants to wants to list their home. So then there you go, vertical video. So now you have the scripts. And my my experience share with vertical video is don't overthink it. Because in my experience, like I start thinking about, okay, the, like the production values of the video. Okay, I don't have the right ring light now. Oh, I'm not quite prepared. Where's my lavalier mic? Where's this? And in my experience, I end up procrastinating based on that. And, and in fact, what your audience really wants is authenticity, right? So they don't really care and they want the content. They want value. And so it's about screw it, just do it. Yeah. And it's like, you know, perfection's the enemy of progress. So just go for it. Take your phone out. Look, take a look at that 30 second to one minute script. If you'd like to like take this to the next level, go to Amazon and buy a $40 um, teleprompter. My favorite teleprompter is Prompt Smart Pro. I use the and same that, one. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So that one's been great. I just don't want to overwhelm people either. Yeah. Like, hey, just start out with some of these scripts and wing it a little bit. And that vertical video, and then what you can do is use a, a program like Hootsuite, H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E. And what you can do is upload that video. And what it'll do is distribute it out to all those platforms we talked about a few minutes ago. And it'll so all of a sudden, that vertical video that was just a, a, a hope and a dream on your commute, you, you talked about a topic that you know a lot about. Remember, just talk about stuff that you know about. And then, boom, you know, a couple hours later, it's a vertical video that's posted across social media. It's a great idea because it's funny that, that you mentioned that because I always tell people, I'm like, some mostly, most of the time, my best ideas come one of three places. When I'm out for a run, when I'm in the shower, or when I'm driving all of which you cannot just stop and shoot video. And even if I could, what I said in my head doesn't come out the same way when I press play. Right. And so I love this. This is such a great idea. So it's, it's leave yourself a voice memo, put it in, use Temi, take that transcription, put it in a chat GPT, ask it to give you scripts, then use a teleprompter. So you don't have to memorize this stuff. And you've probably got who knows how many video ideas in a relative short amount of efficient time, right? It's that's crazy. That's that's awesome. And let me just cool. I'm glad that's valuable. So, and then the other thing, so extra credit here. So once you've created your video, okay, take that and have Timmy transcribe that video. And then take that text, give it to GPT-4 and ask GPT-4 to create uh, captions across all the social channels and add proper emojis to the captions. <laughs> and it'll do it. Mm -hmm. Literally copy and paste. Ask it to create uh, proper hashtags as well. And it'll do all this. So to me, that's the... Yeah diabolical shortcut with GPT-4 if you're a realtor. Stuff like that is really valuable. The one thing I would say, don't create blog posts yet using GPT-4 because Google, yeah. uh, it is widely thought among my SEO buddies and in the SEO community, SEO search engine optimization, that's like getting sites ranked on Google. That It's widely thought that Google algorithmically can detect whether a blog or other article was created using AI and it will demote your site. So you need to be really careful because anyone can create articles using AI. And so the big differentiator, I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but I think this tip will be super, super valuable. So Google's algorithm for ranking sites the last 10 plus years has been EAT, expertise, authority, and trust. It needs to prove that you have the expertise, authority, and trust. Well, in the wake of AI, it has added an additional letter to that acronym, and it's E, experience. 
So what it what Google needs to learn and feel confident about is that you, when you post an article about a neighborhood, if you post an article about the four home staging secrets to selling your home for top dollar, or how to increase curb appeal, or how to you know get a loan, or how to what how to choose the right real estate agent, what questions to ask, Google needs to know that you're qualified. And remember, something that anyone can do easily, like just ask GPT for for that article isn't valuable. So what you need to do is think about how you appear on podcasts, how you uh, write articles on authoritative places like medium.com and other other places, how you uh, join associations and so forth, so that Google, when you write the article, you can refer to those citations and those links like the the podcast, like the association and so forth, so that Google will say, you know what, he or she has the experience and the expertise and the authority and the trust. We're going to rank that person's article even above Zillow. And so like my buddy, uh, David Siddons, who's a very happy audience client, he's a number 96, I think, on Real Trends, top uh, agent in the US. He did $600 million in volume last year. One of the main ways he generates leads is through his website. And that guy is constantly thinking of David Siddons about give, 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 get. So what will he do? He'll go and interview all the admissions directors for all the private schools in, in his city. And he will have that transcribed, create articles, and so he will appear on every imaginable podcast, he'll author articles. And what's, what is that doing? That is giving Google the uh, comfort of knowing that if Google elevates David Sidden's site, that you know it's going to be great content. Because remember, Google lives and dies by the authoritativeness and trust of its organic rankings. E-A-T-E. E-A-T, and then there's an additional E. Yeah, it for the it could be at the end, or it could be at the beginning. Yeah. But there, for the new Absolutely. algorithm, if you, if anyone listening Googles E-E-A-T, they and Google, <laughs> you will see like a, a number of really nerdy articles about this. And Google has very quietly now incorporated this in its official document, its Webmaster Guidelines document, which is about 160 pages. And next time you really want to a great soporific. Next time you want to fall asleep quickly, you just read that. Uh, but I'm a total nerd for this uh, kind of stuff. And EEAT is totally official. It's not widely known, definitely not known among people that aren't steeped in this industry. And if you really focus as a real estate agent on the experience piece on building that trust, man, it'll pay dividends for your whole career. Phenomenal, man. Uh, what about, what about, um, and I've been saying this since, since the dawn of ChatGPT because I was the one looking, everybody's looking at this like, oh, how's this going to make my life easier? And I was looking at it like, hey, don't rush here to try to cheat or find a, a hack. That stuff never, it's never sustainable, right? And so two questions. Number one, if you're going to use it to write a blog post, you're going to use it to write something that would might, might be used in SEO. How much of that article, because I tell people like, take that. And I, I say the same thing with scripts, take it, what they give you, take what ChatGPT gives you as a baseline and now add in your own personal, you know, words that will make it more you. Is there you coming from your world? Do, do they, your, your contacts, your people in the SEO world say there's so much of a blog post that you should dice up and make your own that will essentially trick Google to make it think that it's authentic? Yeah. So, I mean, the rule of thumb is at least 50% should be. Uh, the way we do it is the whole thing has to be written by a human uh, because you don't know which phrases and so forth Google has identified or precisely how it identifies the hallmark of something that's written by AI. What we do is we use uh, Rider Access, W-R-I-T-E-R, access.com, which is like the Uber of writers. And you're going to spend only five or six cents per word to have a real human being, a real copywriter, someone who's a great writer, create an article. And the way you want to start is you want to start by creating the be-all, end-all article about 
your topic or you think about the keyword for example if you're a real estate agent in phoenix your keyword is probably phoenix real estate agent and so you want to take a look you want to type in that keyword take a look at who's ranking remember this isn't the people who are paying for that term this aren't the sponsored results this is the organic results you want to see who's ranking top five and then you want to create an article a piece of content that is so much better. Uh, for example, with handwritten notes for real estate agents, we rank number one and two. And same with handwritten notes for mortgage, handwritten notes for insurance, handwritten notes for dentists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Our handwritten notes for realtors article is 6,700 words long. And so one asks, what on earth are you writing about in 6,700 words? Well, we're writing about the history of handwritten notes. There's a lot that you can really create there. And the whole point is that you want you don't want to be just a little bit better than everyone else out there. You want to be like head, shoulders, and torso better than everybody else, more, more authoritative. And what Google does, if you're that Phoenix real estate agent, is it looks at that main article and it really then paints your entire site with uh, kind of a, a gold star or you know a tr trust, uh, and it and so you really want to focus on spending some money, a couple hundred bucks through Rider Access. And remember, you can do the research using ChatGPT. So do the create the outline using ChatGPT. And remember our voice memo thing. T talk about everything you know about Phoenix. Uh, real estate. Everything you know should be in there. Have it transcribed and then ask ChatGPT to create an amazing outline for a, for a 6,000 word article all about, you know, Phoenix real estate or Phoenix real estate agents. And then boom, then have an actual human being write it off of Rider Access. You can also go to a platform like Upwork.com, which is like the Uber of, you know, contractors. But I love Rider Access just because it's, it is for just writers. Mm. Gosh, I love it. Um, the uh, the second question was going to be, do you think that if you're using Google Bard or Baird or however it's pronounced and you have it write you a blog post, will it will it actually maybe help your SEO? That is a great question. And the SEO community doesn't know yet because it's so so in such early days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, boy, it sure it sure would be in line with the way that um, Google has engaged in monopolistic behavior <laughs> for the last 25 <laughs> years. I wouldn't put it past them at all to um, to create that incentive, which would be decidedly illegal, um, but uh, not not on the right side of the foul line. And I love Google and I'm, I've been happy to be part of their ecosystem. But they, you know, 94 percent of the world's searches originate on that search engine. Yeah. Like when you look up the definition of monopoly, that's them. Yeah, and so you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you you create something using Bard if it would if it would elevate you. But I'd say to hedge all your bets, you know, you're not creating that many articles. If you're creating a couple dozen articles, invest a couple thousand dollars in having a real human writer create those. And that was uh, what was that website again? Writer Access W R I T E R Access dot com. Writer Access dot com. Got it. Got it. That's uh, tons of value, man. So, and we've got about 10 minutes left. So I want to, I want to obviously segue over. That was, that was an incredible conversation. I almost feel like we have to have a part two um, and, and off subject. Do you know, Chris Tam, are you familiar with Chris? No. Okay. Another, uh, another AI guru right now. Um, you know, almost Chris Heller esque. I'm surprised they're not related. They even kind of have some similarities in the way they look. He's based out of Denver, but um, I ask, I've, I've had similar conversations with him as I'm having with you here. And it's, it's, it's wildly fascinating. I love it. And I think, uh, I think the one advice I would give to a real estate agent right now is, is consume as much of people like Jesse and Chris and Chris Heller and these kind of people as, as you can, because it's that outside the box thinking at going back to the original question that I had for you, which is where should, I, where, where should I focus my attention? How should I look ahead? Like, this is so incredible. This is more important now than ever in the history of mankind to now start to think differently, stop being a follower, start embracing early. So let's talk about let's talk about your your business, your current business, which is really cool. And it's it's kind of funny because it's like connecting super old school with super new school 
Uh, so tell us about it. audience.co. You have to check this out. AI based handwritten notes. Uh, tell us how, how your clients are utilizing this. Uh, maybe, maybe the way they're using it, thinking outside the box, because we all know if, if you're not super busy, if you are that toe dipper, damn it, Jesse, they should be writing their own damn handwritten notes because you've got the time to do it. But as you scale, this is where you need an audience.co, right? So let's talk about it. Like, tell us, let's give us some, give them some tips and ideas on handwritten notes. And then let's talk more about the platform. Absolutely. So for what, what my goal is here is I'm going to teach you how to do it yourself. And then I'm going to tell you what we bring to the table. And then if you decide to do it yourself, awesome. That's great. If you decide that you want to have a chat with our, our team and, and partner with us, that's great too. So how should you do handwritten notes? So the key, there's a couple of, of keys with handwritten notes. First off, the note card needs to be thick. And so you make sure, and not too thick. So don't do something that feels like a wedding invitation. That would be odd, but also make it substantial. So the envelope needs to be handwritten. There must be a real first-class postage stamp on the front. It, not pre-canceled, not one of these cheapy stamps, a real first-class postage stamp. And so it arrives, like the first objective is it arrives into their mailbox and it gets a near 100% open rate and it makes it to the kitchen counter. And then they open it and the front of the note, first of all, the note itself, I'm holding this up for people that are, that are watching this, but I'm holding up a bifold little note card, okay? And so make it bifold so that it invites them to keep and display the note so they can set it's already a stand in and of itself. Okay, then front of note graphic. Never put a photo of you or a big logo of your brokerage. All right, it's counterintuitive, right? At first, one would think, well, I want to make it personal. This is a personal medium. It's a handwritten note. Why can't I put a photo of me or you know a, a logo of my brokerage? Nobody wants a photo of a stranger on their kitchen counter. Okay, nobody, and nobody wants even a logo. At, even at like around the holidays. Exactly. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Well, the, the problem with sending during the holidays, we never send during the holidays. We send second week of January and during the holidays. It's because just there's too lost. many. Yeah. Yeah. You're not special. So the whole key with this and the key with top agents is they apply the 180 degree rule, don't they? So when everyone's going one way, when everyone's pulling back on their marketing now in the, in, you know, in the midst of uh, rising interest rates and softening market, the really great agents, just like in 08, 09 and 10, they hit the accelerator because they knew that that when they emerged from this softening in the market, that they'd be way stronger than everyone else. So front of note graphic, do a local landmark in the area to let the recipient know you understand their community and also to maximize the chances that that recipient will keep and display the note, something artsy. And it, like what we do is we put a landmark on the front that aligns exactly with the neighborhood, the golf club, the building, wherever you're sending it. We customize, there's a lot of stuff that we do uniquely in the marketplace. We customize the front of note graphic and we run it through, it's gotta look artsy. So run it through a watercolor or impressionistic. Uh, we even are starting to use AI to create some of our images. Okay, so that's the front of note graphic. Then the note itself needs to be between 600 and 750 characters. Okay, we know that. Because, why? Because my background is technology, so all we do is do A-B tests. And we've sent now millions of notes, so we know the optimal character length is between 600 and 7, 750 characters. How many, words, how many words is that? Um, oh, good question. That's about 200 words, I think. Right. And so that, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I do everything in character counts. I should know that the word count um, down pat, but I don't. And so what that allows you to do, and we have a whole library of, of, of note templates for every occasion. So if you're trying to send to orphan buyers, we have that note template down and we, we've tested dozens of them and we know exactly which note template commands the highest response rate from orphan buyers, for example. Mm -hmm. Or if you're trying to farm farm a new neighborhood, or you're doing probates, or pre foreclosures, or rental leads ready to cash out, or fizzbos, we know we have that full 
template library. But if you're doing it yourself, then you want to, you know, you can ask ChatGPT as well. And we use, we infuse AI into everything we do. And so we always will take a best performing note, but we'll have ChatGPT improve it further. But 600 to 750 characters allows you to tell a story about why you have perhaps a couple of buyers. And you want to make sure that they are real buyers, that Linda and Sam are real buyers, mm -hmm. really looking for their house. Do not make the mistake of saying that you have buyers and then, then people get bait and switched when they call you and it turns out you don't. You only have one chance to, to, to build trust and trust is a really fragile thing. So 600 and 750 characters, PIM and chip must be neat. Like all 15 of our fonts are, are easy in the eyes. Why? If you don't have neat PIM and chip, then you are um, not doing the recipient uh, any yeah. favors because they have to now carefully like read through your uh, read through your chicken scratch. The sloppy reflection. Totally, yeah, it's a sloppy reflection as well. It should feel like you carefully wrote wrote this thing. Then you should have your phone number. You should have an email address. And then what we do is a QR code sticker right on there. And that QR code sticker is important because someone scans that. And then our client, the agent, gets a real-time email alert letting them know that Jane Doe at 123 Main Street just scanned your note, go after it. Now, here's where the magic really, really happens. Before we send a single note, we filter down your leads and only send notes to the most likely to sell households. So we have 230 filters in our homeowner database, and we can filter by, you name it, owner age, equity levels, when the COO was issued, obviously property values. We can lasso specific street boundaries. You just want odd number of houses in that golf club. We got you covered and so forth. So we filter down the leads and then we find the email addresses and social handles and phone numbers, cell phone numbers of the note recipients. And so like Josh Cooley, for example, who's in Eugene, Oregon, and is a great FOC friend of Chris Heller. He's an awesome guy, right? He's he's one of the top agents in, in Eugene. He's just a great guy too. His formula, along with hundreds and hundreds of other audience clients, is he uses, here's the key, use the note as a Trojan horse. The note is the thing that takes an ice cold audience, and this is perfect for farming, takes an ice cold audience and turns it into a warm audience. That's why I named the company audience and not something old school with handwriting or whatever, because I knew what it's about is taking that cold homeowner, warming up the homeowner, and then following the user journey from the mailbox, from the analog world to the inbox, to the digital world. And so what we do is, is you call a week later, after it's been delivered, they've had time to check their mailbox, you call them never to sell. Remember, selling is cringy. What you do is you call and you confirm, you ask, "Did hi, this is such and such. Hi, Jane. First of all, I'm not selling you anything. I sent you a handwritten note. It has a beautiful image of the fountain in front of Chastain Lakes there. I just wanted to confirm that you received it. That's it. And then she might say, oh, yeah, actually, I got it. Great. I just noticed there's a lot of activity in your neighborhood, and I want to reach out to you because I have a couple of buyers who have been looking at your home and are really interested. And it just goes from there. We make it really tough to fail. Then you email them a week later with a subject line, did you receive my handwritten note? And everything, all of our clients do this through our app. So it's super, super easy. Then we even give you AI-driven, AI-created email newsletters. So now, remember, all modern marketing is integrated. And so people consume content in very different ways. So you want to make sure that you're there. And I know that you do with, with Drunk on Social and you do a phenomenal job with this, right? So you don't know if people are mainly Facebook users or mainly TikTok. And remember, TikTok is not for selling, you know, hoodies to 14-year-olds anymore. Like right. there are a bunch of agents quietly crushing it on TikTok. Yep. So we get you the email newsletters. We even get you... Uh, captions, market reports, all kinds of great information. We get you my full digital marketing training system is in your app when you become an audience client. And the way that we price it is super straightforward. And a lot of people say it's a little too good to be true, but it's $1.49 for unlimited handwritten notes, including the 62 cent stamp, including the materials, including everything I just talked about. And then what you do with wait, us- Wait, 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 say, say that again. $1.49. For unlimited notes, what you do first is you claim your territory. 
and territories start at $99 per month, okay? And they typically are between 99 bucks and 199 bucks for a territory. Exclusive? What, exclusive. Ooh. So you're buying exclusivity with us. So if you are an agent in on the Upper West Side and you want to buy it each uh, square, we kind of like break it down to each 27 acres. Uh, but with 99 bucks or 199 bucks, you can do some damage and you can buy several hundred households or more. Uh, if you, for example, are the king or queen uh, realtor of a certain building, you can reserve a building with us and you reserve with that, you get all the leads. We deliver on day one. Let's say that you farm a building with 310 units. We get you all 310 leads uploaded into your account. We find all available emails. We find all available phone numbers, social handles, including LinkedIn profiles, and then about 40 other data points, everything from equity levels to owner age and so forth. All that's in your audience app ready to go. And then once you've you know, reserved your property, uh, your territory rights, you can send unlimited $1.49 notes, which you you could you can't even buy the materials and the stamp off of, you know, you can't buy the materials on Amazon or a 62 cent stamp and not spend a buck 49. So yeah. for one just, million. Yeah. Yeah. We do it at scale and that's why we're able to do it. And then the territory rights uh, allows us to do it. But um, what, it's what is, the, what is the what is the radius on a, on a territory typically? It's about a half a half mile. Uh, radius depending, of course, New York City. Yeah, I was going to say more of a rural, different. more of a midwestern community. For example, what would that typically be? About a half mile. It depends. It, okay. It's it's a calculation of population density and property values. And so, you know, an, ranch land in East Texas will be priced much differently than than Dallas uh, yeah. buildings, for example. Yeah, yeah, interesting. That's that's fascinating, man. Um, and so did, did, you're saying that there's also, there is a CRM component to this. Yes. That's, yes. This is your marketing hub. Um, yeah. I mean, the CRM, I love, uh, for example, Follow Up Boss, uh, actually the founder and CEO of Follow Up Boss, uh, so yeah. investor and friend. Uh, he's amazing. They love audience. We have a great tight integration with Follow Up Boss and there's great CRMs out there. What we are is more of a marketing hub. And so you can go into the audience app and you can trigger, um, you can trigger emails, you can, uh, you, all your contacts are there. You can export the data. You can sync the data with, with CRMs. Uh, and so people love the app. You can send one off. So what a lot of agents will do is like, they'll like, you know, go to a listing appointment and they'll take a selfie with the person, let's say, and then they'll uh, send a card with the image of the selfie on the front. And then a couple of days later, the person gets the, gets the notes. There's a lot of like surprising and delighting uh, your homeowners, which you can do directly from our app. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, we also, see, we also find, uh, I'm sorry, but there's yeah, one but, more thing that agents absolutely yeah. love. We find, we find your sphere on day one, and then we automatically detect when you list or sell a home. And then we'll, we'll trigger an email letting you know that we've detected it. And then you can trigger notes on surrounding households when you list or sell. So what, what a lot of agents tell us is not only is it a really cost-effective solution, but it's um, it's just super easy to use. And it lets them focus on negotiating and selling homes and the best and highest use of their time. Do do a lot of people that use the platform have it connect to a, an existing CRM? Do a lot of people just end up integrating and using your own? They end up using our own typically. If they use a follow-up boss, for example, uh, they'll, they'll integrate uh, or a boomtown. But for the most part, people will use our platform. And then if they want the data, they can export it directly. And then they'll play around with a, a spreadsheet or whatnot. Do or whatever. And, just, and you are, you're also including when you're buying that territory or territories, uh, you're the one then producing the target audience, the, the address, the you email, got it. the phone number. There's nothing you need to do. Uh, and there's a lot, like you don't need to submit your own leads, nothing. You just wow. claim territories. And then on day one, we get you everything. And then the beauty is you can trigger directly from your phone. You can trigger mailers. You can have, if you have a you know TC or if you've got a um, marketing person or an assistant, you can have them trigger mailers. It just takes a minute directly inside our app. And 
for that uh, territory rights fee, we create a graphic suite. I know this feels too good to be true, but it's what we do. We create a, a graphic suite for you of all the neighborhoods that are inside your territory. So that that you know fountain that I mentioned in Chastain Lakes in Kennesaw, Georgia, will create the graphic for that because we know that's something that you want to use. And we also upload all your orphan buyers. So that's one thing like Chris Heller, who was the number one Keller Williams agent, right? And the CEO of Keller Williams, I asked him, I said, years ago, I said, give me one of the your diabolical shortcuts. He says, well, I wouldn't say it's a shortcut. He said, but it's um, it's a hack. And he said, you just, you have to hit your orphan buyers every time. If you're on the sell side of a transaction, the chances that the buyer's agent is actually going to keep in touch with the buyer, highly unlikely. And so what he did was he gave us all the scripts that have worked the, the best for him. And he's sold more than 4,000 homes now over the last 40 years. And so we have that fully loaded up on day one. When you start with us, you have a filter directly inside your app with audience that says orphan buyers and buyers. And you can directly trigger notes to those folks. Wow. That's I, uh, I, I'm almost half thinking that I don't even want to release this because I just want to keep it for myself <laughs> at this point. Um, this is, dude, this is great, man. I, I think, I actually think we, we need more time. We don't have it. So maybe, maybe we're going to have to circle back and do a follow-up or do a second episode. Um, this has been, uh, it's been awesome. I've taken a bunch of notes and I only have, uh, you know, uh, post-it notes. So as you can see, I'm writing really small and, and <laughs> but, uh, this is a good one, man. This is really great. I, I really, it's really great, to, great to meet. I'm glad, glad that, uh, Chris recommended, uh, or connected you to Tristan who connected you to me and, and, uh, we're definitely gonna, we're, de we're definitely gonna talk some more, man. This has been great. What is the best way to get connected to you? Obviously they can go to audience.co if they have questions, if they want to just kind of get into your ecosystem, how do they do that? What's the best way? Sure. Yeah. Audience.co, you submit a lead or directly to me, J-E-S-S-E -S -S -E at audience.co. Just email me directly. Jesse, it was, uh, has been a pleasure. I look forward to the next time we get to chat and uh, I love what you're doing. Uh, next time I'm going to ask you all about your failures. Now I got to just got to see the kink in the armor, I think, just to see what's... Uh, if, you, if you have a four-hour spot for that <laughs> one, then no problem. <laughs> Dude, I appreciate you, man. Go check this out, audience.co. And I hope you took some notes on some of his ideas uh, for creating scripts, the vertical video, all that stuff. This is incredibly valuable. Go find more episodes just like this. This is where you need to be spending your time consuming nowadays. Jesse, until next time, my friend. Thanks, Jeff. Podcasts.